Hello and welcome to Somerville Gardener, where if you haven't noticed yet on any of my videos or you're new here, I do gardening a little bit weird. So I've got some beans that I picked up at Lowe's, uh, Blue Lake Stringless FM1K pole beans, and some Landreth's Stringless bush beans. And we're going to get weird with these seeds. Now, of course, I'm going to use some normal looking poles for the pole beans just, you know, to see what happens because poles on pole beans or pole beans on poles seems normal but what i'm going to do is something a little not normal so stick around and i'm going to show you how i'm going to stick these in the ground and follow along with me on this progression so that we can see what works and what doesn't now i have selected three of these pole bean seeds at random i'm not sure which one of them is looking any better than any others because i don't know what bean seeds look like or what beans look like when they're planted so Right here, I've got my compost pile where we toss our tea leaf bags, uh, chunks of pineapple, we got orange pieces in here, all kinds of just table scraps, uh, just whatever came out the kitchen, fresh fruit, vegetables, what have you. All that gets mixed in here, and I don't plan on stopping tossing it in this pile, but a lot of this is good compost, and we're going to see what happens when you grow three beans up a pole in a pile of compost. And one of these, I'm just gonna let run. And the other one, I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens. So following the instructions on the bag, we're going to put in one, put one over here, one right there, and one right here in a little tri-pattern. Cover those up. I'll get these watered. Ooh, is that a mango? Yeah, piece of mango. All kinds of good stuff. Bugs everywhere. We like bugs. There we go. So. One's gonna go up the pole, one's gonna go across the ground, and one's gonna go, I don't know, might go up the pole, may go over this banana. Ooh, that's a good idea. Let's try one growing on the side of a banana and see if we can get it to grow up a banana. And since there's a banana right here by the compost pile, um, let's just toss a banana seed in, or not, a banana seed, we're not planting bananas. Uh, put a bean seed right there on that one, and um, let's go over here a little bit. Yeah, here's another one where we've got a a few pseudostems from bananas. And let's just plant this one in right here. Ooh, that is some nice soft stuff. Uh, just see what happens when you companion plant a pole bean next to bananas, like right in them. Can we get it to grow up the banana? We're gonna find out. Let's see what else we can do. Now over here, we're gonna try one in a nice big open area. Uh, there's a couple bananas a few feet away. There's a, a taro that grows right here, or elephant ear. Um, oh, and then we got some an old pile of turmeric right here. Yep, got some old turmeric right there. So got some turmeric that'll keep growing right here next to it. Uh, let's just put it right here. See how easily that, oh, that is some nice, good, soft ground. Uh, let's put, dig these leaves out the way, stick one right here on this side, and let's stick one back here on this back side. And let's see what happens there. Oh, we got a root. Ugh. Ooh, that's a banana root. Can tell by the smell. Replace our leaf litter. And this area here, as you can kind of tell, this is you know, mid-afternoon. So there's some dappled shade here, but the rest of the day, it is full sun. Now I've got two more poles for my pole beans left. So I'm gonna chuck one down there and this area here this is a bit of a low area it's kind of hard for you to tell on the camera but uh, these two banana rows are on high areas and it kind of drains down towards the center here so I'm just wondering with this leaf litter and this nice loose soil that we have created here what happens if we drop in oh hang on Let's stick this guy in here first see how soft it is pretty good Stick one in front and one behind. Sprinkle our leaf litter. And this is gonna be a full sun spot all day long, but I do know that this gets a lot of moisture back here. So we're gonna see how they do in that kind of condition. Now this just happens to be where I threw that stick and just where it landed. So this is a higher ground spot. Again, lots of leaf litter uh, that's been deposited here. Lots of good mycelial fungus, some good white powder on this. I'm not sure if you can really see this, but 
all these pieces here have good mycelial growth going oh i dropped it oh well just trust me there's lots of good white mycelial growth here with all this let's go ahead and drop this in wow again really nice soft soil and we've got our nice two bean pole bean seeds so one in front oops do one in front and one behind and as the sun kind of comes out just a bit here now you can see this is going to be full sun all day long good high ground good fertile soil sprinkle our leaf litter and there we go now let's do another weird one let's plant a couple around these bananas here just in case it's got different soil or just something else different happens we'll plant them a little bit further away let's not lose them kind of drop one in there put one back over here and stick one right up in here Yeah, let's plant one over here too. On this other banana. Or two. Let's do two on this other banana. Take two. They're small. One for you. And let's put the other one up over here. One for you. And I guess just out of my genuine curiosity, we've got our attack or our guard T-Rex right over here. Let's see how well he can do at guarding our potatoes that we planted in here. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you check out the channel page. Get a look at the, uh, the potato planting video. So let's plant one, let's put one over here underneath our dinosaur. Uh, let's plant one right here next to the potato. Just to see what it does. We got a potato and a bean pole right next to each other. What's going to happen? Now this sad little guy right here is my Sanguinelli blood orange. I have some serious doubts, even from the time that I bought it, that it would survive from one year to the next. It is a skeleton at this point, a very dry crumbly yeah it just snaps uh skeleton it's still got a little bit of green here in this trunk going up a bit and down over here a bit down here to the uh, graft union i don't know if it's going to continue or not so let's make some use out of it as a trellis for a pole bean we got some good wood mulch and uh, other leaf litter and pine needles and everything down here so let's plant a couple of pole beans around it so maybe a little bit of extra boost of nitrogen from a a pole bean, maybe that'll help it out. That, and I'm kind of curious to see what happens if you try and grow beans in a bunch of wood chips. And these are fresh, raw wood chips. They haven't been composted at all. They came off of a tree. They got chipped up, delivered, dropped out here, uh, maybe just a month or so ago at this point. So they are actively composting and robbing the nitrogen also out of the top little layer of the soil. But once the roots get down a good bit, everything should be fine as far as the beans are concerned. And then they can just use this as a trellis, I guess. Poor guy. Come on, you can make it. You can do it. Now, once again, just because I like getting a little weird. So this is a nice, soft, squishy area here. Next to the neighbor's fence. Wow, that just slides right into. Uh, I'm just gonna drop like three of them in here. Just make sure we have a good one that germinates. Uh, this is right next to the neighbor's fence. So it'll get sun from about 11 to noonish, all the way to uh, sunset. So let's dig back this raw mulch a bit. And by a bit, it might go down a long ways. Okay, that might go down a really long ways. Oh, we hit pay dirt finally. Uh, we're at about five, six inches of wood chip mulch on top of this. So I'm gonna find my three seeds again. There we go. So one, two, and three. We're just gonna push them down just a little bit. Oh, hey, look, I found a little onion. Take that little guy out. Ooh, yeah, we are eating like a king tonight. And now for Land Earth Stringless Bush Beans. Let's see uh, where we can put some of these bush beans. Just kind of spread them out here by the bananas. Maybe spread out a few down through here. And then of course we gotta put some down in these wood chips just to see what happens. And we are not gonna be stingy with these at all. So over here in this compost area, oh, let me show you these real quick. So these bush beans are brown. So they look just a bit different than the uh, pole beans. And since we have our pole bean right here, let's stick a bush bean back over here. And we'll put a bush bean back over here. And we're gonna put a bush bean, uh, let's just put them right up here in front.
Now, since I don't really know how big these things are going to get, we're going to come over here to this shaded area. Broken bean. I don't think a broken bean's going to work too well. We'll see. I doubt anything's going to happen over there. So let's put these four beans uh, strategically around here. How about one right here? And we got some Awapui ginger back over here that I'm trying to see if it'll come back up from one year to the next. So let's just put one over here a bit. Stick one of these really close to this taro. This uh, is going to get really big and it gets kind of bushy and leafy. So I'm not sure how well that guy's going to do, but we're going to try him out. And we'll stick one right up here, right next to the turmeric. I sure hope you are uh, paying attention where these are going because I'm probably going to lose half of the stuff and have to review video in order to find everything. It's a good time. Now coming back over to our more of a marshy kind of area in between the bananas. Let's go ahead and do the same thing and just put four bean plants right around it. And just take one here. One back over here. Ooh, wow, this is going to be an extra squishy one. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can tell by the way that the leaf litter is decomposed, but this right here, this is right where the water likes to uh, go. So let's ooh, squish one right there. And then put one of these up kind of close to the banana. See how that does. Now our next area, again, kind of a big open area. It's up a bit. Uh, no drainage issues here. Everything stays pretty dry for the most part. Get one, two, three, four. That's five, four. And we're gonna do the same thing. Just uh, go around this one, see how it does. One. Two. This third one will plant kind of close to this uh, lemongrass right here. And this one up towards the front, it's gonna have nice, clear, open, nothing in its way. Just to see how well a bush bean grows under Tyrannosaurus guard. Let's plant a couple here. Let's, uh, we did pole bean there, so let's do bush bean down over here. And let's throw one. Don't remember if I put one over here. This is a potato. Mm. So let's just put it on the edge. Yeah, squish it right there. There we go, and this one here, Put one over there. One of the uh, pole beans is over there. So let's do a bush bean back over here by the fence in all this muck. Again, we're just trying to see what happens. Now, as far as marshy area goes, this area right here, I'm just gonna kind of spread these around. Poke this guy in near the fence. Uh, this one, oh, where'd it go? There he is. Uh, squish this one right, oh, well that is, ew. That is really soft and mushy. Uh, this whole area, again, is gonna get covered in wood chips and another few days to a week. Um, I, I don't know if they'll push up there or not. I, we're gonna just check and see. Yeah, throw another one over here. If we ever see it again, cool. If not, we know not to do that again. That's a wasp. I probably better move. And here's another great onion growing right here, so I'm not gonna mess with that one, but we are right next to the neighbor's fence again. Uh, these are some really thick wood chips, so I'm gonna put three in a ball, my fist. I'm gonna dig down right next to this onion. Wow, that is gonna be a deep hole. Really deep hole. I'm hitting grassroots. Oh, wow, there's a lot of, of grassroots growing way under there. Okay, I finally hit the bottom. This is a quite deep hole. Uh, I'm gonna say it's about that deep. Uh, we'll call that 10 inches deep in wood chips. Whew, down the hole you go, buddies. Poke them in just a little bit under the soil. And I'm just gonna leave that big old gaping hole sitting there and we're just gonna see what happens. Because that's what we're doing this for. We just wanna see what happens when we plant pole beans and uh, bush beans out and around to see what works, 
and what doesn't. So I hope you guys enjoyed this so far. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe if you do. If you don't, then mm, don't. Uh, but if you do subscribe, we're going to be doing further updates on the Landris uh, stringless bush beans and the Blue Lake stringless FM1K pole beans and just see what happens when you plant them in those different conditions, which one works good, which one works not so good. And then you'll, you'll be able to know, or I'll know it where I can plant these in the future in my yard. And ooh, that squirrel, he is eyeing that area. That Tyrannosaurus Rex had better be doing his job. See you guys next time in the garden.